Yankees. In a world where quarks mean so much to society, a superpower that gives the person an opportunity to be a hero. Almost everybody in this society wants exactly that, wants to be a hero, wants to be a person that can save people. But the thing is, is not everyone can do so. Some may have to play their role. Some become those heroes, some become support heroes, and others become, well, regular people. Some go and do jobs as a doctor, policeman, all noble jobs, but not every kid can fulfill that. In the original canon, Azuku Midoriya was just that, but we are going to bless him with a brand new quirk instead. Azuku was born into a family, the Midoriya family, with only his mother and his father out on sea. They had very odd quirks. One, his mother had a minor telekinesis quirk and his father could breathe fire. His mother would, well, basically think about this and maybe he would get her quirk or maybe he would get his, maybe a combination of the two. But that's not actually what happens. When Azuku was four years old, they were all watching TV, until Azuku's eyes began to flicker. He began to see the TV in a new way, see all of everything in a new way. The lights, the machines, the washing machine, the TV itself, everything, the phone screens, everything around him felt different. He looked at the TV and moved his hand and it began changing. The channels began to change and he looked at the lights and he was able to make the lights turn off and on without even moving from his seat. His mother began to freak out at this, saying that it must be his quirk and that this is amazing. We need to, that they need to figure out what it is. So that's exactly what they do. The next day, she takes Azuku to the doctors. And when he arrives, the doctor greets them in and explains to them after doing some tests what his quirk is. Yes, it seems that his quirk is called Technopath. His quirk basically allows him to control electronics, machines, things like that. It's very interesting, actually. A very strong quirk as well. But it really depends on what he wants to be. He could have major success in a regular job and probably make a lot of money as an amazing engineer, top of the line for say. Or he can be a support hero and probably be very successful in that as well. The only thing is, a regular hero, it would be definitely a hurdle for him to, well, get past. The mom, or Inko, asks why he says that and he explains that a technopath quirk in regular society and in terms of hero society wouldn't work as well because, well, it's not raw output, not raw power. You think of someone like All Might, Endeavor, and when you think about them, you think of raw strength, firepower, stuff like that. And well, that's not exactly what Izuku has. He does obviously have very high capabilities. But that's not exactly what he what he's built for. He's not built to, well, be that person at the front line, smashing villains, destroying, dest helping prevent destroyed build buildings from falling on, on citizens. Azuku then basically supports the idea of being a, well, support hero and says that that sounds like an amazing job being a support hero, helping the other heroes, that maybe he can't lift the building, but maybe he can make something that will help another hero lift that building. And well, the doctor is surprised by the sentence that Azuku just said and began an analyzing his quirk more. And it seems that this technopath quirk is a little different. 
Well, yes, he can control machines, but he can also learn from machines themselves. And that's why he was, well, at the age of four, able to formulate a sentence this, well, standard of someone maybe who's 15, 16. Um, the doctor then tells them that of this and that Izuku would, well, basically find his way through, well, regular learning pretty easily as long as he keeps up with his studying and analyzing different machines. Azuku eventually is then allowed to leave with Inko and they head back home. Azuku began analyzing the TV once again, learning everything on the TV, not at a rapid rate by any means, but definitely faster than anybody could have, I mean his age. Azuku continued this, continued this, and then eventually he went back to school um, after the weekend. Katsuki Bakugo, his best friend that he calls Kachan, actually is waiting for him at the front gate and excitedly tells Izuku that he got his quirk. Look, look, look! Bakugo's hands begin to explode and Izuku is excited. And Izuku then explains to Bakugo that he doesn't have this raw output quirk like him and he can't make things explode, but he can control machines. Whoa, really? Like, uh, like robots and stuff like that? Azuku says that that's just it. Yeah, if he made a robot, he could definitely control it. Maybe even a suit of armor or little gadgets. So he'll be the best support hero. Bakugo then agrees. And he basically says that he can't wait for both of them to have their own agency and that he can be the top support hero and that Kachan will be the, well, the top pro hero. So they both agree. And well, they enter the classroom and both of them are praised pretty much for their quirks. A lot of the kids really like Azuku's quirk, being able to control the machines around them and will help with miscellaneous tasks if the teacher allows it. Basically, during class, if the teacher asks, well, can you turn on the TV? Azuku can do that on his own by not even moving. And well, in a weird kid way, everyone is like really psyched about this. And they think it's so cool that Azuku can control all this stuff and that maybe in the future he can control robots and just like those cool power ranger robots and stuff azuku agrees eventually leading to basically a, a childhood where he was never really bullied him and bakugo were pretty good friends obviously bakugo still has his uh superior superiority complex but he still was pretty good friends with azuku azuku had a good quirk and well, there was no reason for him to bully Azuku. So, all the way up until, well, it was their last day at middle school, they were talking about, well, where they would go to high school. And their teacher began talking about giving them career aptitude tests, but then he throws all the papers in the air. But I know all of you want to go the hero route. Everyone begins flashing their quirks, except for Bakugo and Azuku. And he basically explains that that all of them have amazing quirks, but even Azuku and Bakugo are applying to UA. And a lot of the students begin saying that that Azuku will definitely get into the support course, and that Bakugo will definitely have a good chance of getting into the hero course. Bakugo kind of scoffs at this and says that Azuku should be trying to get into the hero course as well, and maybe they can make an exception to do double. But Azuku tells tells Bakugo or Kachan um, that he, that's not really his thing. He never really wanted to be a pro hero. Always he always thought of, of himself as a support hero, and that it better fits his quirk anyways. And then maybe he could, but it would be like taking another spot from someone else that could deserve it. Bakugo rolls his eyes and reluctantly agrees and says that it's his choice. After the class, the the teacher basically lets them all out, and Azuku begins to head home. Bakugo asks if he wants to go train, and maybe they can do some sparring, and Azuku says that he's down to do so, but he needs to head home first, and he'll talk to him later. So, that's exactly what happens. Azuku begins writing in his journal, and he begins heading under a bridge. And during while this is happening, well, a giant villain burst from the sewer. Azuku turns to see this villain and isn't necessarily scared, but he is looking around maybe to see if there's any pro heroes. K 
Kid, I need your body. I didn't know he was here. Azuku tilts his head. Who was here? What are you even talking about? The the giant freaking monster begins charging at Azuku, saying that there's no time to talk, and Azuku realizes that he needs to act quickly. Quickly he throws something on the ground and shoots a mini laser like thing at the at the monster. The mo it goes straight through the monster, and Azuku realizes that this thing is practically liquid. What Azuku shot was basically this thing he created, which was a machine that would lock something or someone into a tiny capsule. So he decides to throw the capsule directly at the monster, and when it hits it, it gets sucked into the capsule. Oh, so the laser doesn't work, but direct contact does. Okay, that needs to be fixed. Azuku walks over and picks up the capsule as something else begins to rumble underneath the bridge, or more precisely, in the sewer. Azuku looks down as the sewer begins to shake and All Might busts through the sewer, screaming and, well, stating, No need to fear, because I am here. Kid, where's the villain? Azuku then tosses him the little capsule and says that the villain is stuck in this little glass cage, sort of. Azuku then pull, basically pulls out a panel, a visual panel, and begins changing the capsule to make it see-through. He enlarges it a little bit and shows that the slug villain is actually captured within it. Yeah, it's kind of my own invention. It's hard to explain, but I only have one of them. So it'd be cool if you can get it out of here into a bottle or something because I kind of need this. All Might is shocked by this and says that he wants to bring Azuku to the police with him and then he'll figure out how to get the sludge villain out of the, well, the, the capsule. Azuku agrees and they basically head over to a police station, entering an office, but as this happens, All Might deflates. The police officer in there apologizes to Azuku and Azuku looks at All Might. Oh, so you're like, uh, uh, you're the same person, right? Like, I assume that's just a form? So, that's kind of weird. So your quirk is like a form. All Might then shakes his head and says that it's a little more complicated than that. But, to a certain extent, yeah, it's a form. But he can't hold the form very long. He doesn't necessarily tell Azuku all the, well, the context behind it. And it, nor does Azuku even ask. Um, Azuku just asks the police captain if it's possible to get the sludge villain out of that thing so he can have the capsule back because he's still working and trying to figure out the kinks in it. The police captain is surprised by this, saying that did he really create this himself? And Azuku said, yeah, he's been working on it for a while and it's supposed to be like a capture device for all villains, but obviously this laser that he has to basically transport them in there doesn't work as well as he thought so he was forced to just throw it at the villain and it ended up working just fine but it might have something to do with him being liquid so he needs to make sure that a person that goes in there normally will be safe the police captain questions how he knew the sludge villain would be safe and azuku basically just says it's because he's liquid that he'd be fine and um this the, the captain is pretty impressed he basically tells Azuku that he has a bright future in definitely being a hero and definitely in support hero and support hero work. All Might agrees and tells Azuku that he would love to actually recommend him for UA. Wait, really? UA? Yes, uh, were you planning on going to UA in the first place? Yes, I was, but if you're going to recommend me, that's even better. I'd love that. That looked so good to other agencies. Yes, no problem. I would love to recommend you. Wow, thank you so much. Wait, recommend. Wait, does that mean you're teaching there? Um, yes, actually. Other pro heroes can recommend without teaching there, though. Oh, oh, really? I didn't know that. Interesting. That's really awesome. So you'll be teaching the hero course, I assume. Yes, the hero course. Uh, and I assume you wanted for the support course. Yeah, support course is just fine. So All Might decides, he decides to actually give this boy, Azuku Midoriya, a recommendation into the support course of UA. 
and well it goes pretty smoothly it's literally one phone call a couple little tidbits of information and azuku is in he just he then realized how short they are on well on support heroes and all might basically tells them that they actually have one pretty good support support student coming in soon that they heard about by the name of mei hatsume and that she creates pretty good support items but this is a new level a capsule that can capture villains without even attacking them is something they've never heard of yeah i've been working on a lot of things as i grew up um i mean i can sh i can of course bring them to ua wh whenever i need um yes i'm sure ua will love to see them and power loader himself cool thank you um if you don't mind me asking when do we start or when does ua start oh um about 11 months from now roughly give or take should i will send you the uh direct date when it gets the chance thank you i appreciate that um i'll be taking my leave now they ask if he needs a ride home and he says that is that is completely fine and that he can get home himself he walks he walks out of the police station and basically does a little jog to his house damn i really wish i had a teleporter a teleporter i should work on that next can i even work on that i feel like that's crossing the line in terms of not having a hero whatever that's a bridge i'll cross later he walks into his home and his mom begins freaking out asking what happened and why he was so late Oh, sorry, I was kind of maybe attacked by a villain, but luckily I had my capsule on me, so I kind of just threw it. Oh, my capsule, I forgot it. Azuku is just then stared at by Inko, and Inko really asks and is like, Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I I'm fine, mom. Okay, honey, um, sounds good? Dinner's ready. Okay? Yeah. Why do you sound so surprised? Because you said that capsule was a prototype and it worked? Yeah, I mean, not completely, but I just threw it at him and it worked. That's good. I'm, I'm glad it worked. Ingo is obviously kind of stunned by the fact that her son made something that was built to instantly capture a villain and he's only 15. She knew her son was very smart, but this is a new realm of genius he created something that even pro heroes have not created and he doesn't even see it as a giant accomplishment he's happy that it worked but he doesn't realize how important important this is so azuku then goes on like normal and eventually the first day of ua then arrives he then looks around basically for it and he finds finds class 1a Oh, this is a hero course. This is cool, I guess. Until someone bumps into him. Move out of the way, you damn nerd. Kachan, come on, man. Don't be like that. Bakugo laughs and tells him that it's good to see him there. And it is weird that he didn't see him at the entrance exam. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you. I kind of, long story short, got recommended by All Might. Bakugo slaps him on the head and says, how could he not say that? How could he not tell him that story and that he's telling him later? Okay, okay, I will. Don't freaking hit me so hard. That hurt. Azuku then looks for his class, eventually finding it, and is greeted by Power Loader. Power Loader then explains to all of them that, well, they're going to be working on, on um, stuff immediately. So everyone will be assigned two people, one from class 1A, one from class 1B. You'll be making basically a support item for them. And I will be passing out those papers right now. Azuku then eventually gets his paper and looks and sees that the first one from class 1A is Bakugo. Wow, this is perfect. I already have so many ideas and I have stuff at home already. And class 1B. Hmm. Setsuna Tokage. Quark Lizard Tail Splitter. Hmm. That's a little bit more interesting than Kachan's, I would say. But it's definitely something I can work with. She can basically separate her body into 50 pieces? How does that even work? Where do her organs go? Okay, that's... I shouldn't be thinking about that. I'll figure it out as I go. 
Power Loader then begins saying that basically they'll be starting their hero, well, training very soon. So they have today and pro probably tomorrow to work on support items. It won't be anything crazy, but it, whatever they can get done and get to them, prototype or not, will be useful for them. Uh, if there's not any questions, I will let you all get to work right now. Good. I will be looking forward to what any of you and all of you can come up with. The class then began working on their new, I guess, technology for the two hero students that they had chosen. And well, as you all know, Azuku got Bakugo and Tokage. Setsuno Tokage or Katsuki Bakugo. So he began working first on Bakugos, which he kind of, it's kind of cheating because he's already worked on something in the past. So he kind of just uses that to more or less perfect it. He starts making something like a, a wristband of sorts that he decides he'll explain later to the class because that's kind of the project. After he's done with that, in a very short amount of time, he works on Tokage's, which is a little bit more complex. He decides that he wants to do something with nanotech, especially in terms of her quirk. Being able to split into so many pieces, maybe he can do something with the pieces. Maybe, maybe, maybe make them more effective in a way. First, he thought maybe he can uh, make it so it's instantaneous and that they'll immediately come back to her. But he thought that, well, that's really, really, really complex to do, especially in only about two days. So, and that has to do with portals and warping, and even he doesn't have too much experience in that regard. So, he began working on the nanotech that he has in mind, and after about two days, they're basically posted to present for the class. After everyone presents, Azuku then begins to present, and a lot of people are kind of psyched about this, especially Mei Hatsume, who's been actually asking for help from him, which he's obviously given, because he's a nice dude, and also he, she's been watching what he's been doing it's so simple everything he's doing it seems very simple but it's complex in a way it's nothing outlandish nothing like rocket boots or a power glider but his very simple just a wristband for bakugo and just small little nanomites for tokage yes they're complex but very small azuku then begins to explain so this right here is the wristband for Katsuki Bakugo. His quirk is obviously explosions, but he can't really control them that well. Um, don't tell him I said that, he'll kill me. But he basically, with this bracelet, he'll be able to read heat, basically how much sweat he's going to be producing. Um, he'll be able to read commands and also condense and even output more explosions. So he can make weaker explosions or maybe even more uh, condensed explosions which would allow him to shoot, well, like, beams or, like I said, giant explosions. Um, this also allows him to use his quirk kind of like a laser cutter. So if you wanted to get into a certain area, but that's more specific than anything. And in this way is definitely, if you go a weaker explosion route, it will definitely be used as a better equipped smoke screen. The class is pretty impressed, so is Power Loader, and he even says so. He says that he's very impressed at the, well, like, the knowledge he has on his quirk already. And Izuku explains that they're childhood friends and they grew up together. So this idea has been in his back pocket for a while, but he just needed to tweak some things out. Um, then Power Loader then tells him to go on to his next student that he has for the hero course, especially because, well, her quirk is very uh, different. He, he then explains that, well, there's nanotech involved in this one. He shows, he puts a piece of the nanomite on his hand and clenches his fist and his fist goes invisible. He tells him that this, well, will give temporarily invisibility. It's kind of complicated how it works, but it's very short amount of time. As he says this, the invisibility then wears off. He explains that he wanted to make it longer and probably can in the future, but with a short amount of time, it was practically impossible. So he made five to about eight nanomites for her to put on different pieces of her body so that she can do this, being her fists, feet, anything like that. 
so the enemy or the villain or in training nobody will see the punch coming because well the best punch is the one that can't be seen may is obviously super like excited to see this and she she basically runs up and says that she needs to know how the invisibility works and that this could be revolutionary for for other projects she has in mind as well as well he tells her that i mean that he'll show her uh soon but uh power loader then says that it's really impressive and tells the rest of them to go up as well to basically explain their projects in which a lot of people don't even want to because they're kind of underwhelming compared to azuku's but all that proceeds as normal or well proceeds through and everyone explains their projects in which then it's now time for the first hero training session so azuku heads over to class 1a as they begin training with all might he arrives while all might is actually explaining everything hello young heroes so here's the plan today it will be heroes versus villains and the villains will have to protect a bomb the heroes will have to go after said bomb touch it or knock out the other two villains now the first team will be katsuki bakugo and ida versus uraka and todoroki azuku basically just listens in as all might then spots him oh young midoriya i was told you would come over here bakugo then turns and sees midoriya and kind of smirks azuku walks over and pats on bakugo's shoulder and hands him something this is hero tech that i've been working on it's for a class project I, I guess i'm the only one that's fully prepared to give you this he looks around to see that the rest of the people in his class aren't there to give their student it maybe thinking that it was so underwhelming that they didn't want to but he just shrugged it off and um until basically may came in and gave momo something but that's something we'll talk about some other time so he proceeds to explain to bakugo what the wristband or the bracelet is and he explains well exactly what he told everyone else that it reads heat commands from him and can condense and output more or less explosions depending on what he needs even using it like a laser cutter smoke screens stuff like that but more or less has extreme control over his explosion slash beams now bakugo smirks and says that this was a good idea yeah i know i've been working on it for a while so i would hope it'd be a good idea yeah yeah now i can't wait to use it bakugo then walks out with his with his teammate and he is on the villain side so he begins protecting the bomb all might tells all of them to follow him and they go to a giant screen and begin watching bakugo immediately sets up in a position where he's closer downstairs ida tells him maybe they should both protect the bomb and bakugo says to not worry and that he has an idea so bakugo waits on a staircase nearby the entrance when he waits there five minutes pass and all might tells the heroes that they can go in well todoroki immediately freezes over the entirety of the building and thinks that he got everyone in it but what he doesn't know is that bakugo is currently hovering with small explosions barely being able to be heard bakugo then drops on the ice sliding down the staircase but doesn't go all the way to the entrance he goes right where he cannot be seen a beam of what seems to be an explosion but it looks like a beam of light shoots down the staircase but todoroki isn't worried because there's so many turns on the staircase that there's no way it will hit him well until the beam curves the beam begins curving and bakugo guides the beam right to todoroki and uraka and it ricochets off both of them knocking them both out instantly villain team wins all might is even confused that he's never been able to notice that bakugo could do that he watched their other well their other test with aizawa in the cork assessment and bakugo was not able to do that it would have been very helpful if he was able to do that during that ball throw, but he couldn't. So what happened? Well, the class looks at Izuku, and so does All Might. Hey, don't look at me. I didn't tell him he could do that. All I told him is that he would have more control over his explosions. He came up with that himself. 
they are all shocked they they wouldn't believe that bakugo would be that smart well they knew he was he beat everyone in the entrance exam but this smart he came up with something on the fly he heard control and knew that he can make a beam like that that's insane azuku just smiles well you see technology is only good when the person knows how to use it so that's all him i just gave him the means to do so his mind can be as creative as he wants they all are shocked by this response that it's like azuku knew that bakugo would come up with something of this manner maybe not this specifically but something like it they all begin to swarm him saying that they, they want something as well that that please like help him out and and basically Izuku tells them that he definitely will get around to it that it's kind of his job now and since he's a support student but to be patient because making stuff like that does take time and well a lot of it he then looks at the screen and sees two, uh, another group going up and tells All Might why the well cameras are in such weird spots and they can barely see anything All Might says that this is the safest way of doing it but well Deku being Deku or Azuku being Zuku kind of waves his hand putting the cameras directly in the point of view of the students and All Might asks how did he do that well I'm kind of a technopath just a little bit at least that's what my quirk is called uh, I basically put the cameras in their suits. They're not gonna notice them. They won't get destroyed It's actually it's like they're not even there. I'm just bouncing reflections All Might is shocked by this bouncing reflections Yeah, I, that's kind of the simplest way of explaining it if I explain it the complex way I don't think anybody will understand it. So just think of it like I'm pointing a camera at a mirror and that mirror is pointing at another mirror Sort of. Just bouncing reflections. All Might nods and says that this camera view is a lot better. Bakugo then, obviously being done with his match, walks up and high fives Azuku, telling him that that was really good. I didn't do much. You came up with that on your own. So, congrats. Good win. Uraka and, well, Todoroki walk up as well, which Uraka tells Bakugo that that was insane and that was like really impressive but Todoroki has other words to say he is pissed he says that without that support the support item that he would have beat Bakugo easily and before Bakugo could say anything Azuku just laughs you really think that to be true that's interesting well your other support student didn't give you anything and unfortunately that's not how the world works, Mr. Todoroki. Actually, if you didn't know, well, let me think. Uh, support items are part of hero society. So I don't care how strong your quirk is, you still lost. And frankly, you would have lost without that, well, support item as well. Todoroki says that he knows nothing and goes to basically bump Azuku's shoulder but can't even get near him. He actually is propelled away from him. Huh? How the hell you do that? Oh, just a support item for myself. It's kind of in my clothing. Just repels the force around me. It's uh, kind of like a personal space bubble, you could say. So don't intrude in my personal space. Todoroki scoffs and walks off, and Bakugo begins laughing, saying that that was hilarious. That he just <laughs> that he just destroyed half and half. Azuku just waves it off and tells them that he has to get going now. That he has to go work on some stuff and well tomorrow he has to go give a new support item to a student from class 1B whenever they start their hero training. So Bakugo and everyone says goodbye to Azuku and they all tell him that he better promise to work on support items for them as well and he says he will and to not worry about it. So he leaves and he goes back into his class and begins working on some other stuff more for himself but also to get stuff ready for the next day he goes home and then eventually obviously the next day arrives in which well class 1b is training it's nothing crazy it's nothing like 
what's well 1a was doing but they're training more in a one versus one light sparring match and he approaches the girl that has a weird reptilian purple suit on i kind of respect the outfit it's kind of nice he walks up and taps her on the shoulder she asks what he wants and he introduces himself azuka midoriya um i'm the support student that basically has you for my project so i have something for you actually she actually gets excited that she heard about class 1a and that he gave bakugo something very beneficial oh yeah i i, I feel like i gave some something to kacha on that was pretty good but i mean yours is a little bit more complex she she smiles thinking that that she's gonna have something better than Bakugo's, especially of how good she heard that went. And uh, he basically taps her on the shoulder, taps her on the hand, and then taps her on the other shoulder and taps her on the hand, and then drops two other things into her palm. I just put nano nano mites, other some nanotech on your shoulder, well both shoulders, both hands, and you can put them on your feet and your legs. I didn't want to touch your legs. That's kind of weird. She laughs and says agreed and touches basically the nanomites onto the other parts of her body and he basically begins explaining. So when you separate your body, you can separate limbs. So what I did was I made it so the nanomites would temporarily make your, well, your limbs invisible. Go ahead and clench your fist. She does so and the nanomite may, makes her fist invisible. He, she begins to trip out about this and that it's like so weird to see your own body invisible yeah yeah i know but here's the thing the best punch the best kick is the one you can't see so with your ability to basically camouflage in a way you can kind of separate your body and then camouflage into a wall and when someone goes by that punch won't be seen or you can even separate your body make your fist go invisible and well, there'll always be that threat of an invisible attack coming. She is very impressed by this. She thanks him profusely about it, and he says that it's just going to be his job, so it's really no reason to thank him. Um, a lot of the Class 1B students are actually listening to this and get pretty mad that they're like, where are their support items to have this much effect? And he says that he's sorry and that his other classmates are currently working on support items and that they just felt they weren't good enough. Their support items weren't good enough quite yet, so they should get them soon. They, they ask if he can make some and he says that he'll definitely get around to making everybody something, but even Class 1A wants some, um, something from him as well. So, it was then said that Setsuna Tokage would go against someone in Class 1B. So, that's exactly what happens. Vlad King instructs them and Setsuna will go against Monoma. Someone that, well, is a very tricky opponent and can analyze something, well, basically analyze a battlefield very easily. So, their fight begins. And initially, it's pretty even. Setsuna doesn't really use her nanomites because she wanted to see how far she can get without them, but she then basically separates her hand and throws a punch at Monoma. But when that punch flies by him, it then goes invisible. Monoma turns to go block it, but Setsuna had no intention of throwing that punch again and punches him in the jaw, sending him out of the arena. She is shocked by this, thinking that the threat of just having an invisible limb out there, an invisible, something you could not see is a major threat in itself because you're reacting and trying to predict something that may or may not come at all. Everything is a 50-50 and in a battle, you never want a 50-50 to be able to defend yourself. And well, Vlad King is very impressed by this, even congratulating Izuku on a job well done. And Izuku just says that, that he didn't do much. I mean, he made the technology, but like he said before, the technology doesn't make the hero, so it's really whoever gets the technology in their hands and what they can do with it. Vlad King smiles and says that he'll definitely be one heck of a hero. Thanks, I appreciate that. 
Well, I should be going now. Um, my class is doing something right now as well, so um, thank you all for having me. Azuku then leaves as they all say bye. And when he arrives back, Power Loader then begins speaking to the class. With that said and done, with all the hero students done and over with for now, for now, um, we will look ahead a little bit. In one week, there will be something called the UA Sports Festival. I'm sure all of you know what it is. And I want all of you to be prepared for yourselves. I want you guys to do very well, promote your, your technologies if you see fit, and stuff like that. I know Mehatsume has personally already making some things for herself and is going to use it as a way of promoting it. Wow, that's a pretty good idea. Interesting. Maybe I should do the same. Power Loader then explains more and more and says that they'll be given the next week or so to do so. And well, that's exactly what they do. They begin training and working on stuff and well, three or four days in something occurs that well power loader doesn't really tell them in the time at that time but he runs out to basically help with the uh invasion of the usj and that goes about the same in terms of everyone being okay and them getting a couple days off and well the last you know little bit before the ua sports festival they're basically have to work on their own and Azuku does just that, making a couple gadgets here and there for himself. A ga couple gauntlets, couple force fields, stuff like that. Enhancements on his already gadgets, like I said. He has that little force field thing when people get too close to him. So, but I'm going to leave all that to be a surprise. The day of the UA Sports Festival is upon us. Azuku is waiting for, well, his class to be called out. And that's exactly what happens. Midnight announces all the classes from class 1A, class 1B, the general studies, and many others. And then his class, the support course. The support course basically arrives and everyone mildly celebrates. And well, this will be pretty interesting as this time develops. The support course has never been the most popular, but obviously never been the, the least popular by any means. But everybody's there to see the hero course. The hero course is what is exciting. What is the new breed of heroes that are coming up next? But Azuku wants to shine some light on the support course. And with his new gadgets, he will, he hopes that it will help. So he waits on as Bakugo Katsuki, his best friend actually speaks on on what what is going to happen in this festival in which he all he says is that he's going to win and azuku just sighs knowing that's kind of what he was going to do may even walks up and questions isn't that his friend and why would he say stuff like that but azuku kind of laughs and just says that everyone has their own special quirky personalities let's just say that so Midnight then announces the first event. The first event is the obstacle course. She explains that there will be various obstacles for them to go through, starting with a giant tunnel or corridor. So he ha she has all of the students line up and wait as they are given the signal. Now begin! All the classes begin running through the corridor until well it begins to freeze over by someone from the class 1a by the name of shoto todoroki ice begins to fill the corridor and many begin to get stuck but azuku quickly begins hovering above it two of the gadgets azuku has are basically blaster gauntlets and boots and it allows him to hover slash fly but more or less just go straight up and down and kind of move forward he hasn't really toned out all the kinks, but that's why he has another piece of tech to counteract it. He boosts himself up above everyone else and begins gliding using a high-tech wingsuit that he actually created and it wasn't too difficult. He actually put some various nanotech so he can control it just manually on his own with his quirk, basically being able to change the wing size and the wing's direction so that he can sail faster, slower, all of the above. 
he sails over Todoroki, who is actually already past the ice. And Todoroki looks up as he questions that that is a support course student. He tries to speed up himself, but Izuku is already basically far past him. Already at where, well, there are giant robots. Azuku smiles at this as the giant robot punches at him. He boosts up on the robot's arm and touches the robot. And he begins hacking into it. Azuku smiles and looks toward everyone as they run toward the robot. Yeah, good luck everybody. This is going to be a lot harder than you thought. Azuku then, then moves his hand a little bit in some weird way and begins typing on his panel in front of him while he runs. They all look at the robot as the robot begins to break into pieces into smaller robots. They are all lined up in front of, well, the other students, not allowing them to pass, creating a pseudo wall of some sort. Well, the students try to fight them off, but these robots are even stronger than the ones that they did or they beat at the entrance exam. Azuku, well, may have toned them up a little bit with his quirk. Nothing too much where they would hurt someone, but he he basically was able to do this and stop them from chasing very quickly. Azuku also made, with the rest of the scrap, basically made a su another pseudo wall of not robots, but just straight up machinery, basically slowing everybody down extremely. So Azuku keeps running, eventually coming down to the ravine, in which he quickly just boosters up and then sails right across with his wingsuit, eventually making it to the minefield, in which he just runs across, disarming every single mine and, well, just running on top of them like it wouldn't even matter. But after every mine he disarms, he just, you know, reactivates it right back once again, eventually getting to the finish line before anyone can even really pass up on the ravine part of the obstacle course. Azuku finishes in record time, and everyone is extremely surprised that someone from the support course got here so quickly. Bakugo even hears that Azuku made it, and he slightly smirks, but is kind of frustrated, thinking that he can't wait to fight the nerd, eventually obviously, in hopefully a 1 vs 1 battle. So after some time, Todoroki and Bakugo, who are neck and neck, eventually make it through in which Bakugo gets second and Todoroki gets third. Bakugo slaps Izuku on the, on the back saying that he did good, but don't expect him to take it easy when the one versus ones happen. Yeah, yeah, I know Kachan, but let's just get to the one versus ones first and then we can have that chat later. Bakugo kind of laughs at this and Todoroki just watches on as they conversate, thinking that Bakugo is such an asshole to everyone else, but to Izuku he's nice? doesn't really make sense to him, but he just kind of blows it off. So this continues on, I, I mean, well, everyone else finishes, and eventually the next event is announced. And the next event will be the cavalry battle, and the first place person will have a whopping 10 million points. Azuku kind of laughs at this, thinking that, well, if they just survive, it'll be an auto win. But what's the fun in that? He walks over to Bakugo and begins talking to him. So Kachan, little proposition. What do you want? Don't tell me you want to team up with me. Actually, I do. You, me, Mei, Kirishima? The guy that you talk to all the time? Is that your best friend over there? Oh, he's not my best friend, you nerd. Shut up. Okay, okay, okay. Look, it's easy that way. And trust me, I have something up my sleeve to get everybody's points. Well, I guess on my sleeve. Bakugo smirks at this. What do you have in mind? Azuku explains the plan and Baku Bakugo's eyes grow wide and he smiles even more. He tells Azuku that he is he's ready for whatever and Azuku to ask Mei and then Bakugo asks Hiroshima to join their team. The cavalry battle has, well, then begins with Azuku, Mei, Kirishima, and Bakugo with a plan up their sleeve not to maintain their points, which they would win very easily if they did, but 
to get everyone else's. So that's exactly what happens. Azuku begins throwing these weird rings around the, the area, seemingly like bracelets. And every time someone hovers above it, they teleport to a ring or a bracelet and grab their headband and teleport back, eventually leading to getting every single band that is on the stage. But there's still one team that they lack, and that is Todoroki's team. Todoroki's team begins to try and make a, make a play to get some more bands from them, but Azuku has planned for this very much so. The blaster gauntlets that help him fly are not only well able to make him hover, but they're also an offensive weapon. So when Ida comes charging at them, he quickly blasts at the ground, making a small crater causing him to trip. Azuku quickly grabs the band and Bakugo grabs any other band that is there by blasting off of them and grabbing it and, and Azuku teleports him right back on, on so that they're not disqualified, eventually leading them to have every single band in which Bakugo is kind of like half covered by all the bands and had to put some on his arms and stuff. And then eventually Midnight calls it over. Everybody, everybody in the stadium is baffled at this. That's not only did a hero student, which is insane, but a support student helped in, in getting every single band on the stage. Azuku and Bakugo's teamwork baffled everybody. It was like they knew each other since they were kids. And they've been training since they were kids. But the audience didn't know that that was kind of true. Azuku and Bakugo have this sort of fighting chemistry that nobody else really had and nobody else could really keep up with. So that's exactly what happened. They took down every single person. Midnight is extremely impressed and she says some obviously very outlandish things to children that are not of age. And then she announces that the next bull battle will be one versus one. But obviously, there's only four of them. So the one versus ones will begin and she will announce who they will be facing after the break. So they have a short little break and it's eventually decided. It's going to be Mei Hatsume versus Azuku Midoriya and... Bakugo versus Kirishima. She explains that she did this so that they can have a guaranteed final of a support and a hero student. And that this will be a first time that support students actually make it to the very end. Azuku laughs at this and Mei is slightly nervous but is happy at the same time. Don't worry Mei, we're gonna advertise your, let's say your gadgets a little bit here. Mei is happy about this. She, in the first place, did not care about winning. All she cared about was advertising the gear she had. So being able to do that would matter to her. And actually, she has some different gear than in canon. Slightly, at least. Being that Izuku already created some gauntlets and some boots that are far beyond anything she would have made, she decided to go a different route. So their fight fell a little bit more like a showcase. Azuku began hovering and flying toward her and she throws something at him, something that seemed to be magnetic. It lands on Azuku and he quickly is forced to the ground, slamming into it. It like propelled him back down as if it was reversing his gravity. When it slammed him into the ground, he landed and an electricity cage began to arise around it. The crowd can be heard saying their oohs and ahs about the device, and in which Izuku quickly was is able to shut it off with his quirk after the fact, after they revealed all the perks of having this. And well, he turns it off, and then Mei walks off, off the stage. They are all confused, and Izuku and Mei kind of just laugh. They literally did turn this into a showcase, showcasing the little item or a support item that May has been working on for a while. 
and you can even hear the other agencies or the, the the heroes of those agencies talking about that item and that it must be super beneficial for capturing villains azuku also laughs about this hearing hearing this makes him think that he should probably work on that item that is in basically beta stage but what she made was very impressive Azuku basically thanks, thanks her for taking the dive, and she says that she should be thanking him for letting her, well, you know, show her, her gadget off. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Kind of worked out for the best, you know? Because frankly, if you got Kach on, there is no chance he would have let you do that. She kind of laughs at this, and they walk back to the stands as they watch on, well, for Bakugo and Kirishima's fight. Their fight goes pretty normal. Bakugo basically eventually wears Kirishima down. Kirishima is more like a punching bag than anything, and Bakugo is easily able to evade all the attacks. Eventually, leading to the finale, the final match between two best friends, Bakugo Katsuki versus Azuku Midoriya. They are both they are both sent out, and well, they're standing right in front of each other. Bakugo tells him that he won't hold back and that Azuku shouldn't either. Yeah, yeah. It really depends. Do you want it to be a drawn out fight or a quick one, Kachan? Don't get so cocky, you damn nerd. Just wait. I'll show you. The fight then begins and Azuku immediately charges at him using his his blaster gauntlets and basically they're in a standstill. Their movement is practically mirroring each other. Izuku has been analyzing Bakugo's movements, and using the blaster gauntlets, he can basically replicate it. Bakugo even talks about this, saying that he's mocking his movements, and Izuku tells him he's not mocking them, he's just using the most effective way of moving around. Izuku begins closing the distance on Bakugo, trying to what seems to get him in a corner. He feels that if he can limit Bakugo's movement, there could be a serious chance that he'll win this fight. So he begins throwing teleportation bracelets everywhere, and he has 8 of them, so he has a lot to spare. He begins throwing them around, and they begin inching closer and closer to each other. Bakugo doesn't even realize this, that he's getting cornered slowly but surely, and the ring is getting sectioned off. But the same thing is happening to Izuku. Him pushing these teleportation bracelets closer and closer to Bakugo forces him to get closer and closer to him as well. But Izuku doesn't have, well, a crazy quirk like Bakugo does in terms of combat. Izuku's quirk is all based on machinery, and he knows that. So he tries to be very, very careful while getting closer and closer to Bakugo, and eventually Bakugo makes one false step and Izuku throws a bracelet outside of the arena, basically pushing Bakugo into one of the rings and teleporting him outside. Bakugo tries to catch himself by blowing, blowing up the ground, but as he does, he touches the outside barely with the tip of his foot. Bakugo laughs and kind of smiles at this as President Mike announces Izuku Midoriya as the winner of the UA Sports Festival. Azuku walks over and shakes Bakugo's hand, and Bakugo just kind of laughs at this. You know, in a real fight, you wouldn't have these little out of bounds rules. Yeah, yeah, I know. But you gotta, you know, take advantage of your surroundings. You can shoot explosions. I can make little toy cars move. <laughs> Bakugo kind of laughs at this and tells him that he's downplaying his quirk and slaps him on the back eventually leading to All Might basically giving them their top three medals. Azuku getting first, Bakugo getting second, and well, they decided to save time, they would just give Mei and Kirishima the third place medal together, especially because there was literally only four people in the final. Well, at least the final event. So, this then was the conclusion of the UA Sports Festival. And it went extremely well for Izuku, but it was more for getting his equipment recognized by other agencies, in which this definitely worked. 
After getting about two days off, Azuku heads back to school and, well, class, and when he heads in, well, Power Loader has something on the board. He begins talking about these agencies that have reached out to some of them, not all of them, but definitely some of them, in which the mass majority is Azuku and Mei Hatsume. Yes, and actually, Azuku and Mei, you two are in a pretty good position. Huh? Why is that? Because actually, these some of these agencies have reached out and want you to work with them for kind of a pseudo internship, but you'll be acting as their support hero, more or less making equipment and other things like that, and maybe even helping the other support heroes that are already there. Whoa, are you serious? That's insane. When when do I start? When do we start? Who offered? Power Loader tells him to settle down a little bit and that he'll get right to that after class and to not worry about it too much right now. Class concludes and obviously Power Loader calls over Mei Hatsume and Izuku Midoriya and begins telling them what is going on. He explains that Mei got offered by some agencies but Izuku got offered by a lot but he recommends going to this one. Azuku looks at the person he points at and is shocked, shocked that someone like him would actually offer a support hero an agency internship. He never does that. He keeps everything strict and small. Yes, actually, very surprising to me too. But you got to keep in mind, though, he doesn't even have a support hero. So you would be taking on a large bit of responsibility. Are you ready for that? Yeah, I'm definitely ready for that. A hundred percent. Okay, good, because this would be more like a work study than anything. Internships are limited. This would be heavily, heavily work oriented. Yeah, that's completely fine. I'll do whatever I have to do. Power Loader knew, well, basically tells him that he knew he would say that and gives him a sl like a slip of paper and something to sign. Eventually, Power Loader tells him that tomorrow, he'll get picked up in a car and driven to that agency. Azuku, super excited, tells Mei that he hopes that she has a similar opportunity as well, and he runs out of class. Eventually, the next day, Azuku gets picked up by a car and brought to the agency. And when he gets out, he is greeted by a smiling face. Hey, you must be Azuku Midoriya. Yeah, I am. Mirio Togata, nice to meet you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. You go to UA2, right? You're part of the big three. Yep, that's me. Wow, this is unreal. Well, Nadai would love to meet you. Let's get you inside. Azuku then follows him in, and he is greeted by Nadai. Nadai explains that there's a lot to do for him, and that he is happy to have him here. That he wants to put his quirk and his ability to make support items to use and actually for a specific reason to hunt down and find the one and only overhaul azuku is staring at night eye in shock that overhaul is the person he needs to be searching for yes kid i know well can you do it um yeah i, I definitely can it's gonna take me some time though can I get that time off from school, from whatever? Yeah, you can. This is more or less a work study, kid. You'll be all right as long as you keep up with your work. All right, yeah, show me the support lab. Not I basically guides him to the support lab and shows him that anything here is at his disposal, disposal and that if he needs anything else to let him know. So Azuku begins working and he works for week for at least a week more until the tv just turns on breaking news this is currently happening in a city near you so be careful when you go out your home he is confused and looks at the tv and when he sees he sees something interesting scary in fact all might fighting the villain by the name of all for one Azuku watches on as the symbol of peace eventually wins, but in his deflated form, he raises his fist and says that it's now your turn. Azuku is 
confused, shocked, and surprised by all of this. Nara even walks in, and Izuku questions him, asking that isn't wasn't he one of All Might's past sidekicks? Yeah, I was. And he's still the same old All Might. Fighting no matter what, fighting no matter the injury. Injury? Yeah, kid, injury. Uh, he probably wouldn't want me telling people this, but you are a pretty good support hero, so maybe you can do something about it in the future. He has a pretty bad injury, and that's all I'll really say about it. But that's why we're here now. I see. Well, every, every hero needs to fall one day. But if I can figure anything out, Night Eye, trust me, I'll do something about it. I know, kid. I know. How's it coming along? It's coming along. It's good. I should be good in at least one more week. Maybe. Maybe sooner. It really depends. Um, the goggles I'm making are pretty high-tech. More high-tech than most of the things I've ever made. I mean, I've made something a little bit more high-tech, but that is still in, like, beta stage. Got it. Let me, uh, let me know if you need anything, kid. Thanks. I appreciate it. Azuku continues to work. He continues crafting and more or less analyzing anything he possibly can, eventually and finally being done. Being done with these high-tech goggles. And he calls for Night Eye, and Mirio and Night Eye both come into the support lab and he begins to explain. Okay, so here's how these goggles work. Really, they only work for me, so it's not something crazy. But they should enhance my, my Technopath powers. And I should be able to sense electronics and all of the above, really, um, around the certain locations you told me that they were. Now, I kind of need, well, your permission to do so. We're talking about a villain. We're talking about basically intruding on many electronics that may be even be in people's homes. So if I can get your permission, since I don't have a license myself, I can go ahead and start searching for overhaul. Yeah, of course, kid, you have my permission. Just be careful and don't get, you know, in more trouble than you have to. Yeah, of course. I'm just looking at the locations that you said. Then goggles activate and Azuku's basically shows up a massive hologram, hologram, a screen that he begins touching and searching everywhere he possibly can. He looks around, eventually finding a suspicious place it seems like this could possibly be the place that overhaul is keeping himself and his gang he basically can sense the electronics underground making him assume that they might be down there during this time azuku begins pinpointing different areas until he sees overhaul exit his home hey guys i don't know if you're seeing this but if you want to make a move on overhaul, maybe it's a good time now. A little girl is then seen running away from the building and running into another alleyway. Seems like he has, well, some kid problems as well. Nadai looks at the screen seeing exactly what Izuku was talking about. There's a child, a child running away from overhaul. And it's like overhaul is chasing her for some reason. She must be important if overhaul of all people would want her back that badly so overhaul and mirio say that they're going to cut them off they ask for the location and azuku tells them the exact location and he can basically send them on their, send it to them on their phones they both nod and head out azuku watches on by the near, nearby electronics as mirio and nairai arrive just as the little girl is captured azuku begins watching on as their fight begins he sees that Night Eye, obviously with his quirk, he can keep up very easily. He knew about Mirio's quirk, but it seems powerful, extremely powerful, far beyond anything he actually realized. He personally thought it would be, well, limited, but it seems that there's some strength multiplier added on top of it. Something like All Might. Azuku doesn't think too hard about it and continues watching and wishes that he could help himself, but he really can't. But he then gets an idea. The fight is then pushed out into the street. 
Overhaul tells Eri to not move. Azuku sees this and thinks that this is his best chance. It might not work, it might get him caught, and it will damn well get him in trouble, but he doesn't care. If he can get the little girl out of there, that's all that matters in the first place. He puts on gloves, but no, they're his gauntlets. He puts on his boots that he used in the sports festival as well, and he jets off toward their location. Everybody doesn't see him though. He's high in the sky with an oxygen mask on, making sure that he doesn't pass out from the altitude. He crashes down, grabbing Eri and bolts off once again. Overhaul sees this and tries to react, but Mirio clotheslines him into the ground and smirks. That kid, he's pretty fast. You know, he doesn't even have a quirk to fight, really. Overhaul says that he doesn't care and that all he cares about is getting Eri back. Overhaul tries to shoot spikes at Izuku as he's jetting off, but Mirio again blocks it. No, your fight is with me, Overhaul. They begin fighting once again, and Mirio slowly but surely is getting the upper hand. With his advanced strength, for say, and his permeation quirk, he's able to overwhelm Overhaul. And with no help and no backup, Overhaul is defeated, arrested, and thrown into prison. Quickly, Night Eye and Mirio basically run back to the agency telling Izuku that he did good and that they just won't, well, speak of what occurred to get in, to get Eri to the agency and that they need to basically invade the the villain base of the Shia Hazaikai as quick as possible before reinforcements try to break him out. Izuku agrees and gives something to Nidai, telling him that if he needs if he needs help to use this, but use it as a last resort because there is no guarantee that it will work. So Nidai puts it in his pocket and runs off with tons of more heroes to invade the villain base. They do just that, and luckily Nidai doesn't necessarily need the little piece of equipment that Azuku gave him. When they get back, he gives it back to Azuku, and Azuku looks at it seeing that it wasn't used at all. Good, you didn't use it. See, this isn't perfected by any means, so it might have, you know, twisted your body inside out. But that's beyond the point. He he basically places it back on the table, and Nida and Mirio stare at him in confusion. Don't worry, it wasn't actually going to twist your body inside out. It might have, maybe, there's like 25%, 30 maybe 45% chance it would have broken one of your limbs. But it would have been helpful. It really would have been helpful. Even with a broken limb, it would have been helpful. What was it? Uh, I wouldn't worry about that right now. Let me fix the kinks and then we can talk about it. Nadai is still confused, but just agrees and tells Zuzuku that he did a good job helping track down Overhaul or well, tracking him down, frankly, because he did most of the work. And well, he can basically go get set up in UA because he heard that they actually moved into dorms. We moved into dorms? Damn, I haven't been outside in like two weeks. I didn't even know we moved into dorms. Yeah, so go ahead, you can get set up. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Azuku leaves and obviously gets ready, gets all his stuff from his home and puts it into his dorm. May actually sees him and asks what he's been up to. Um, honestly, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. But, uh, just, let's just say some villain hunting stuff? Yeah, that sounds about right. Azuku heads back to Nidai's agency after getting set up, and Nidai tells him that currently, well, they don't have anything else for him to do, so he can have some time off and head back to school and work on any other gadgets he wants to work on with the, I mean, equipment at UA. Because frankly, at UA, there are some very good equipment. So that's exactly what Izuku does. He just begins setting things up and doing all of that. Making some adjustments to something he's been working on. Finally, thinking that he's actually done. Until he hears a knock at the door of the support lab. Power loader opens it. Oh, Aizawa. Um, well, what do you need? I need to talk to the Izuku kid. Oh, 
Okay. Um, Midoriya, come here. Coming. Azuku walks over and is confused why Azawa is even there, but begins talking to him. What do you need, Sensei? Uh, pretty simple. I have someone, well, that needs a little device. I mean, basically to help his quirk. Do you think you could do that? Um, yeah, for sure I could do that. Who do you have in mind? Someone walks in from behind him and begins talking as well. Me. Oh, Hatoshi Shinso, right? Yeah, Azuku Midoriya, correct? Yeah, it's me. Um, sure, come in. We'll see what I can do. Hatoshi Shinso, who is part of the general studies, comes in, and Azuku begins chatting with him about his quirk, learning that he, well, he obviously has a brainwashed quirk and tries to figure out anything he can about the quirk. Okay, I see. So amplifiers would obviously help. Um, voice adjustment. Let's see. Mm, voice copy. So if someone else talks, you can use their voice. Um, anything I'm missing, May? She responds that he knows a little bit more than she does. And that's like, all, all the ideas she had in mind. So it's up to him. You know what? I do have one more thing, Shinso. I do. What is it? Just wait. Azuku begins working and working and well, over the next couple days, he begins working on this. After finishing, he gives Shinso a small earpiece. Okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to focus really, really hard. This is gonna take a lot of brain power here, Shinso. You need to talk in your mind, but I need you to focus on only me. Only me, not the person around you, not anything, not any TVs, nothing. Don't worry, I'm pretty good at that. I ignore everybody. Fair enough. Go ahead. Azuku then hears Shinzo's voice in his head. And he talks to Shinzo's voice while in his head, and he falls under the quirk. No way. Did I just do that telepathically? Azuku doesn't say anything. Oh, I forgot. Shinzo slaps him. Ow! Okay, that was a little hard, but yeah, telepathically. Um, it's some Neuralink that I learned how to use a little while back, but it's kind of complicated. So that's very beta version of it. Ideally, I want to get it to the point where, uh, where you can hear the uh, other person's voice instead. So it's like you're hearing your own thoughts. Whoa, seriously? You can do that? hypothetically yes i mean everything is a theory right i'm not sure for as a hundred percent like a statement of fact i don't know but if it can work it would definitely take your quirk to the next level that's for sure you kidding me this is good enough right now but that would be insane agreed i'll keep i can keep working um how much time do you have and what is this even for i'm gonna be uh trying out i assume for the hero course they're going to be doing a little class 1a versus class 1b combat training oh yeah i heard about that when is that again it's in a couple days perfect it should be done in a couple days shinso smiles and thanks azuku as he leaves yep no problem azuku begins working working and working until he feels that he has it done finally he has it done he has may mess with the verbal version of it and basically helps him more or less do everything but the telepathic version or the neural link version and he basically says that he's finally done after two days and thanks her well i didn't really do anything no you definitely helped me i appreciate it she, he takes the earpiece once again, and also the mask that Shinso has to basically voice modify himself. He brings it to Shinso the day of. Actually, right when Aizawa and him are walking out of the classroom. There you are. Um, yeah, I have a gadget, the gadget for you, Shinso. Really? You did that that quickly, kid? Oh, Shinso told you about it. Yeah, um, I had some help with, with it, so it came out pretty quickly impressive thanks thanks Midori I, I appreciate it 
Shinzo puts it in his ear and puts the mask on. Okay, let's test it out. Shinzo uses his voice to basically talk in Azuku's voice in his head. Shinzo is stunned by this, and Azuku falls under the cork once again. This time, Shinzo slightly pinches him, and he wakes up. Thanks for not slapping me. I appreciate that. I had a, a handprint on my face, Shinzo, for three days. Sorry about that. No, yeah, it's fine. I'm messing around, obviously. But, um, yeah, it should work pretty fine. Pretty, pretty good. Um, make sure that you get them to talk first. I mean, I'm sure you won't have a problem with that. But make sure to keep that in mind when you're, well, fighting. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, kid, um, since we're off to do the class 1A versus class 1B, do you mind, well, joining us? Oh, to watch? Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love to watch. No, kid. I want you to join. To see what you got. Um, actually, I think I'll take you up on that. I have a little gadget I want to test out. But, just so you know, I'm not here to be a standard hero. I chose this because I wanted to be a support hero. I see, I see. But, you know, you could always do both. That is true. Um, yeah, I'll meet you out there. Let me go grab my, uh, my item. You got it. Azuku runs back to the lab and grabs a sort of disc looking thing and puts it in his pocket. Mei asks what he's doing and t she he basically tells her that Aizawa invited him to join their little combat training. Oh, cool. Um, have fun. Thanks. He runs off and meets them over there. And actually, Bakugo greets him. The hell you doing here, nerd? Hey, don't be like that, Kachan. Okay, okay. Seriously, what are you doing here? Um, I guess I'm joining you. Is all offered? So the damn nerd finally admits he wants to be a real hero. Hey, hey, hey don't get too outlandish. Not quite. Aizawa then begins explaining everything that's going to happen, and he says that he decided last minute to change it up a bit. Here's what's gonna happen everyone, and listen closely. Fights are going to go normally. Shinso and Midoriya will not be involved until the very end. This is what we're gonna do. Whoever wins the entire thing, so we're talking either class 1A, which they are, or class 1B. They will choose four people to go against Shinso and his and Midoriya. The class is confused though. They begin asking, what do you mean? And that it wouldn't be fair on a four versus two. Yeah, yeah, I know it wouldn't be. That's why it would be Midoriya and Shinso and their choice of two people from whatever class that loses. The classes then understand. And Azuku and Shinso look at each other and kind of smirk. Yo, Kachan, you better win, because I want to fight you. Hey, you have a death wish? Because that's what it sounds like to me. They both smile, and the first fight of Class 1B versus Class 1A begins. The Class 1A versus the Class 1B fights then begin. The first match goes pretty basic and class 1a wins pretty easily but right after that kendo's team which she is the class representative of class 1b or class president does a nice clean sweep 4-0 over class 1a leading for it to be one to one leading into that next fight which ends up in a draw now that it's a draw it is one to one so the next the next team to take the win will be well in the lead and the next battle is actually between two people that have gotten well support tech from azuku himself it's bakugo and the class rest of class 1a which in this would be cellophane earphone jack and sugar man versus class 1b in which is has Setsuna Tokage and the three other class 1B students with their advanced tech 
well it ends up getting on to the very very end and guess what the two people that are left are bakugo and setsuno tokage setsuna tokage wow now this is interesting what's so interesting about it well i made uh support well support items for both of them bakugo's is a little different just an adaptation of his quirk already and frankly when he evolves more and more he probably can do it on his own but i mean that's why you can see his blast curve around corners and such what about uh the lizard girl oh tokage yes um let's just say she has little nano nanomites in basically parts of her limbs so basically it allows her to turn them invisible like i always say the the best punch is the one you don't see yeah the one you don't see so let's see who wins should be interesting the fight continues on and well last but not least bakugo is able to get the upper hand leading to their team winning and taking the lead but with the last battle ensuing class 1a falls to the phantom thief and some other of the class 1b students the phantom thief other known as monoma and well minds which is the vice president of their class just outsmarted the other team and just defeated them with relative ease this then puts them in an odd situation class 1a got the first one class 1b got the second it was a draw class 1a won and then class 1b won so it is now a complete overall draw so as always sensei what do you think do i just get to choose two from either either class one from each yeah one from each is just fine kid perfect well let's see let me get bakugo and tokage aizawa looks at him and just smirks the two you did support items for yup you got it uh go ahead pick whoever you want aizawa and vlad king then look at who's left they decide to pick kendo to pick shoto todoroki to pick tetsu tetsu and then also momo yayarozu they decided against actually choosing tokiami because well there's a good amount of people on their team that would immediately stop well his dark shadow azuku with whatever blaster he has and well bakugo himself okay let's see it let's make this interesting though if bakugo tokage azuku and well shinso win then well shinso will be joining us in the hero course and so will Azuku if he so chooses. But if you all win, no homework for the next two weeks. Everyone begins to cheer, and Bakugo and Setsuna Takage just sigh, thinking that they're gonna have to stop them from no homework. No, no, you got it wrong. Um, you two will have no homework if you win. Bakugo smirks and says that they're going down, and going down quick. So any uh, plans, you damn nerd? Come on, you know me. I always have a plan. It's pretty simple though. We have everything based on our side. Every gadget that will help us win this pretty easily too. Tokage and me will scout the area pretty quickly, in fact, and we'll set up traps. Shinso and you, Kachan, can lure them in and then, well, we'll capitalize off every weakness they have. He'll be fast. Promise. Wait, how the hell are you gonna scout? Shouldn't I? I'm the one that can fly. Hey, don't doubt me too much. Azuku pulls something out of his pocket and puts it on his chest. He taps it twice and machinery begins growing around him and covers his whole body. A face mask then covers his face and he basically lifts the face mask up. I can fly too. Azuku begins hovering with his jet boots, and Bakugo smirks. Damn, you really are a nerd. A giant metal suit, huh? Hey, don't put it like that. 
It's pretty high tech. Yeah, whatever, nerd. The fight then begins. Tokage and Izuku begin searching around for exactly where everyone is. Eventually finding them, Todoroki blasts a giant wave of fire at them in which they quickly dodge. Tokage not even being really in range, she's only really searching with her face and well her head. So she's not really able to be seen. Azuku, on the other hand, is hovering above them, dodging everything. Kendo tells T Todoroki to focus fire on him, and Momo needs to basically take him down out of the sky. Azuku, hearing this, charges in at them, blasting Todoroki to the side and then kicking Kendo to the wall. Now, you all really think it's gonna be that easy. It's no fun if I take you all out myself, but testing limitations are actually fun as well. Ice begins to cover Azuku, actually entirely, and then Tetsu Tetsu comes in trying to rip off his suit, but as he rips off piece of the piece of the suit, well, it just grows back. Oh, you thought that would work? Unfortunately. Nanotech is one heck of a thing. Azuku blasts Tetsu Tetsu and continues blasting him until he gets slammed into the wall and eventually his steel wears off. He grabs Tetsu Tetsu and bolts off, throwing him as, as Tokage grabs his leg with one of her hands and drags him to the cage. Aizawa announces that one person, Tetsu Tetsu, has been captured. Momo and Kendo are now visibly worried. So is Shoto Todoroki because that happened way too fast. They decide that they're going to take this into their own hands. They'll push forward and try to basically take cover. But this is not good. When they enter, well, Shinso begins talking to them in their heads. He begins telling Kendo in her own voice what to do and eventually leading to her getting caught under his quirk. She quickly grabs Momo with her giant fist and throws her. Azuku catches Momo and drags her back into the cage, eliminating her as well. Shinso then stops using his mind control or his brainwash and Kendo is confused at what just occurred. Well, Todoroki explains to her that somehow she got mind controlled, that something occurred in her own thoughts maybe. Shinso walks out and smiles while holding Aizawa's scarf, well, one of Aizawa's scarves, and grabs Todoroki, kicking him. Yeah, you're right. I'm in your head. Even your thoughts lie to you. Trust me, don't think too much. It may be me. They both are kind of creeped out by this, but at the same time worried. How are they supposed to defend against this? How are they supposed to handle Shinso? Bakugo out of nowhere comes from behind, blasting Todoroki and kicking Kendo, saying that you f they forgot about someone. Tokage quickly grabs Kendo and she tries to break free, in which she does, and she begins falling down to the ground, but immediately Izuku grabs her, knocking her out and dragging her back to the cage as well, capturing her too. Now that there's only one person left, they all surround Todoroki. Todoroki quickly tries to blast them all, but he is quickly defeated as well. They were just outmatched, overwhelmed, and frankly, this wasn't fair in the first place. So, Azuku's team is deemed the winners. Okay, listen up. Shinso will be joining Class 1A. Unfortunately, he won't be joining Class 1B. I apologize. I'm gonna take it upon myself. He is my student. Okay, Azuku on the other hand, or Midoriya, he still needs to decide what he wants to do. So, kid, what do you want to do? You're asking me if I want to join one of the classes. Yeah, I'll even give you a choice. You can do both. You can do the support course and the hero course at the same time. Hmm. Don't be a nerd. You know you're ready for the hero course. You can do both. You've proven it. Okay. Why not? I'll join class 1B. I'll rival class 1A and show you that a support course student is far better than all of you, well, hero course students. 
they all get mad except for class 1b in which they're happy that he's joining them he smirks at bakugo and bakugo smacks him on the head don't think i'm gonna take it easy on you of course not wouldn't expect anything less good i'll see you soon they both then leave and Izuku is then instated into class 1b as well as the support course. <laughs>